Before we look at the answer, let's look at a video. You can check the numbers on your bounce diagram against the numbers in this video for the current waves traveling down the transmission line. Here is the answer for the current bounce diagram. The main things that are different between this bounce diagram and the one for the voltage is that this one has different reflection coefficients at the generator and at the load than for the voltage. Also, to calculate the amplitude of the I1 plus wave, you would use a voltage divider as before for the voltage bounce diagram but also here you have to divide by the characteristic impedance of the transmission line in order to get the current. I1 plus is equal to V1 plus over Z0. Now do you notice from these bounce diagrams that we can have an infinite number of reflections if there is an impedance mismatch at both the load and at the generator? Reflections can continue to occur at the generator and the load indefinitely. What if we wanted to know what the steady state voltage and current are on this transmission line? That is what values they're going to trend towards as time evolves. The volt the, and also which corresponds to the voltage and the current along the entire transmission line a long time after the switch has been closed. Well, one option of course is to add up all these reflections one by one. So V, the steady state voltage, we'll all see which I'll call V infinity, is V1 plus plus V1 minus plus V2 plus plus V2 minus, and so on and so forth. This seems rather tedious. We might imagine there's a more efficient way to find the answer, especially because we're multiplying by the same reflection coefficients each time the wave reaches the generator or the load. And indeed, there is a more efficient way. We can write what's shown here on this slide. This is the same as what I wrote on the previous slide. We have the first term is V1 plus. And instead of writing V1 minus, we write everything in terms of V1 plus. So for V1 minus, we multiply by the reflection coefficient at the load. For V2 plus, we have the reflection coefficients at the load and at the generator, and so forth. Each of these terms, from this one onwards, all have a reflection coefficient at the load. So here we pull that out. We have 1 plus the reflection coefficient at the load. And now we have 1 plus the rest of it. And we can write this uh, as x in this, this term right here, because we have 1 plus x plus x squared and so forth. So x here is equal to the reflection coefficient for the voltage at the load times the reflection coefficient for the voltage at the generator. The terms inside the square bracket constitute a geometric series, this square bracket right here, and we can write it as follows. 1 over 1 minus x is 1 plus x plus x squared and so forth. What's in that bracket? Using this function, we can write the infinite series compactly. So V infinity, instead of adding all those voltages up, we can write it as V1 plus, so that's one term, 1 plus the reflection coefficient of the voltage at the load over 1 minus the reflection coefficient of the voltage at the load times reflection coefficient of the voltage at the generator. Then there's one last thing we can do. We can relate V1 plus to Vg. So then we can further simplify to V infinity is Vg RL over Rg plus RL. Do you notice anything about this equation? the form of this equation remind you of anything?